so now the machine starts sinking, right? And it's raining, and I'm like, fuck, I really gotta keep going. What's up, this is Rebel Radio. What up, what up, this is DJ Newmark. This is Peanut Butter Wolf. It's your boy, it's okay. Keep checking out Rebel Radio. Rebel Radio. This is Rebel Radio. We're in the place right here. Uh -huh. Rebel Radio is going down. Would you say Rebel Radio? Oh, wait, let's do it again. Re Re Rebel Radio. What's up, Rebels? Welcome back to Rebel Radio, the weekly show where I bring you the Rebels who are shaping our culture. I'm your host, Josh Levine. We've been on a little hiatus, but we're back this week with a good one, co-hosted by my frequent co-host, Eddie Donaldson of Gorilla One. Eddie always brings me the illest artists from street art, graffiti, galleries, and today's no exception. We go deep with Chase, a.k.a. The Art of Chase. If you're anywhere around Venice, you've seen his colorful eyeballs uh, all over the place, but he's worldwide. He's done over 450 murals all over the world. He's also the host of the Happy No Fear podcast, and we get into it, uh, the history of graffiti and skateboarding and hip hop and um, his experience moving here as a teenager from Belgium and kind of immersing himself into the culture. And it, there's great lessons in this one because it's really, he really illustrates that uh, it's a business, but it's not a business. And so he, he talks about how he sort of separates the art from the rest of it but he also brings salesmanship and uh legal savvy and and all that to, to what he's doing so let's get into it right now with chase hey let's talk about chase yeah let's talk about who, chase. who, 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 that, who, that, who that dude it's it's great to meet you man i've been seeing your art for years oh i'm sorry man and uh <laughs> and it's great to know that there's a real person behind it yeah thank you man how do you guys know each other? How do we know each other? I remember meeting you through um, Isaac at Sporty LA. Oh, yeah, yeah, Offici yeah. Oh, I That's love right. Like, officially. Because you had that we um, we had, we gallery We had some space, kind of right, event or something. Right. It's like, you know these guys. And I was like, I do, but I don't. And then you right. came, and we already felt like we knew each other when right. we met. It was like, oh, yeah, what's up? Because of probably trade shows and shit. I mean, real quick, Sporty LA, you know, those guys not on their own, but, but they invented sneaker culture. Yeah, 85. With, with right, a few yeah. other folks, right? Yeah. And, you know, I remember, first of all, that store on Melrose, it looked like a fucking swap meet. Yeah. Now you go into Undefeated or Supreme, they're like, yeah. it's a museum. Yeah. That, they had shit piled up all, all over the... It looked, like, it looked like a yard sale. Not they, even, yeah, yeah. they still do. Yeah, they still yeah. do. They, they but, got a lot of consignment stuff going yeah. on. I, I, I talked to them recently. <clears throat> Uh, just went in there. It, it had been a minute uh, when I went in there, since I went in there. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, where's all the cool shit at? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's some cool sure. shit, but it's on consignment. But then the general stuff, like, I feel like, what's going on? Like, you can up that a little bit. I never understood the, the model, right? You know, right? Yeah, they have all this junk, but but <laughs> there are two old Israeli guys who really got yeah, Ellie, sneaker culture. Yeah, Ellie right? and, I, Ellie and I, Isaac, Isaac. Yeah, yeah Isaac. They, they totally got it. And I remember, for me personally, it was the first store that I walked into that they had the custom Air Force Ones where they would go buy old Gucci and Louis bags and cut out the leather yeah. and customize yep. that shit yep. themselves or the Fendi leather yeah. or whatever. And, and that was the first collectible stuff, right? Oh, crazy, man. Yeah. That's yeah. like... So when did you get to L.A.? Uh, 95. Okay. Yeah. From Belgium? Yep. Came straight here? Uh, yeah. What brought you here? Uh, well, um, my pops had attempted to do a business here in 87. Okay. Uh, so we moved out here. What kind of business? A chocolate business. Okay. Being from Belgium, you know? Like, is that uh, like, the th like you're, if you're Belgian, like you're in the chocolate business? Is uh, like no, but, you know, no, it's, it's I mean, like, like yeah. LA, like now you, there's like good products and decent bread, but <laughs> that wasn't the case. Okay. I feel like. That's a little bit recent, you know yeah. what I mean? So I guess he saw an opportunity, um, and uh, he had a real estate business before then, and before then, the reason why he had the real estate business is because he was in kind of like the prostitution business. Okay. <laughs> and uh, when I was born, he was in jail, because he had some, un uh, some chick. Back then, all the girls would travel from Marseille, the south of France, mm. kind of like mob organized. And then, like, that pack of girls would go from city to city. So every two months, the contacts there would sure. have uh, new products, so to speak. Okay. No disrespect, if anybody. <laughs> but that, that's the old days. Sure. 
And one of those chicks was uh, very willing, loved what she did, uh, and turned out to be underage. Mm -hmm. So my dad uh, went inside, and that's when my mom took over the business. Uh, when he came out, one of the conditions uh, of his release was, uh, you can't get back into that business again. Wow. And so he's like, well, what else can I sell? You know, the client list is pretty good. Sure. You know, what can I sell these people to other than yeah, other pussy, than, let's be yeah, honest, yeah. you know? And it was real estate. So okay. we got into that, he built that up. And then, uh, you know, it, it became like a decent business for him. And then he got an offer to sell it, took the money, and with that money, uh, attempted to do his business here in L.A. Mm. So that's how I ended up in L.A. in 87, I think it was. And then um, uh, my best friend uh, was already into skating a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so we used to go to Venice all the time. And uh, that's where I got my first skateboard, probably in like okay. 88. That's a great story to start yeah. with. Yeah, I didn't, um, know that. yeah. I didn't know any of that. I, yeah. got, I got some follow-up questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love it. So first of all, <clears throat> what was going on in Belgium at the time, culturally? Graffiti, uh, hip-hop, any of that? So I, I was nine in 80, okay. in 80 whatever, so you 87. Know. So that's like pre, like, like skateboarding. Like what what were you into as a nine-year-old, like music oh, and all that, all that stuff? That's like just the cusp, you yeah. know? I had my dad's record collection, a lot of Motown stuff, okay. Bee Gees, all that, you know. I yeah. remember uh, Songs in the Key of Life was big, you know, yeah, the Stevie Wonder Stevie album. Wonder. That was always jamming. And it was just like my dad's crew of friends, you know, from like bouncers to uh, prostitutes that uh, he stayed friends with. It's like a rambunctious crew of sure. people. And then uh, for me, it was buying that skateboard, man, on the boardwalk in Venice Beach that like set it off for me, you know? Yeah. And then so my dad's business failed. Uh, he went back home with all of us, of course, broke this time. We kind of moved into like a crappy neighborhood. And then uh, I had my connection to LA through skating. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, in the, in the late 80s, man, you got the magazines, you got the rib grip, the fluorescent colors, you know, you got the airwalks, you know, mm -hmm. like th there's this whole media thing attached to the, to the acting, the doing thing of it. Sure that uh, kept me going for a minute. And then through that, I, I, I discovered hip hop, which was like early 90s. Okay. And that was the second uh, subcultural thing mm -hmm. that like really like got me excited. And then through, at the same time, I, I, I started like uh, tagging and doing all that stuff. Okay. So it sounds like he was hip to the same stuff we were. Right. Most likely, yeah. Even though I'm probably a little maybe bit younger, a little like later. a couple of years younger, maybe. Yeah, but yeah. in the early 90s is when hip hop Yeah, that was broke. the golden era, man. Yeah, like, that's when it broke. And, and, and everyone back home uh, was like, no one understood it, you know? Right. This was our shit. Like, the, the street skating was already like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. The hip hop shit was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. And then, and then the graffiti shit, for those that knew, it was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, no And then no. the skateboarding shit, too. Like, everything's, like, not appreciated. Yeah. Right? And yeah. for me, I was, I was like, look, uh, it's like the RZA used to say, you know, that's what they do, you right. know, but what, what we do is something else and you may judge it, you may try to clown, but we're clowning in reverse. Mm. You know, you guys are the whack ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. Listen to some, you know, fugazi bullshit. So because of that, I became pretty defensive about all these subcultures, mm. you know, because we had to put in so much uh, I mean, just to get a record was crazy. Sure. You know, uh, just to get, uh, you know, the board or like, I mean. Yeah, it was nuts back yeah. in the day. That's why I opened Odd Spot 23 because it was like, you know, we came, we, I grew up in a, like a bubble where mm -hmm. everything wasn't accessible. It wasn't Venice Beach. So me and Danny Boy would, on the weekend, we'd go to <clears throat> catch the bus to one shop to get our belt buckle, mm -hmm. go down to, down to Melrose to get the shoes, go back to Topanga Plaza for this, and it's like a whole day just to get an outfit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's it, lucky, because where I'm from, there, there's no places <laughs> right. to get an outfit. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah, you gotta there's, get on there's a no plane. place to get an outfit. Yeah. You sure. know, like, so the only thing we had a little bit was Carhartt. Because uh, I always thought they were German, but maybe they're not. No, they're from Detroit, but, but they seem German. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, G-Force was his Dutch brand, yeah. which would also have made the, like the, you know, the big baggy pants and stuff. Yeah. But no one could afford that shit. Right. Uh, so, you know, it was mostly like what we wore, what I wore was like through skateboarding because there was more 
it was a couple of skate shops and, and some of them you could steal real easy. Oh, was, wow. I went back later, you know, uh -huh. and apologized. Said, man, I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> here's the 20. Yeah. Um. yeah, he was like, I don't know how much. <laughs> and I remember the worst thing to, to do was to have it behind your belt or in the, in, in the cut lining of, of, of the jacket. You know, you, you already have it on you. All you got to do is walk out. But then, ah, shit, he's on to me. And to unsteal something is way harder than, than, than to, to come up on it. it. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. That's a good life yeah. lesson right there. <laughs> yeah. So wait, back to your, your dad's story. Uh, sounds like he was a, a salesman Yeah, at, like, at, at heart. Ex exactly. What, yeah. what did he teach you about sales? What did you learn Oof, from him? Everything I know. Yeah. And, and just through example. You give, know? Me, give me one. Yeah, like that, for example. Yeah. That brochure, it's a pamphlet, it's a booklet. Yeah. I'm the only one in the world that has a booklet like that. Okay. And that's iteration six of a booklet. Because uh, if you're in the business of loving to paint mm -hmm. and getting walls, that's how, you, uh, that's how you build trust. Sure. You know, give yeah. that to a liquor store, give that to anyone. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, shit, this is different than them other kids that came yeah, in. No sure. Doubt. You know, this is, a, this is serious. Yeah. No doubt. You know? That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's Maurice right there. Uh -huh. That's my dad. <laughs> Not that it. he told me to do that. Sure. It's just... You pick it up. Yeah, I got my mom's side, which is the creative, and then I got my dad's side, which is like the hustle, you know. So how did you start painting? Do you remember, do you remember the first time getting up? Uh, yeah, slowly, you know, first with markers. Uh, then, uh, yeah, there was, we didn't have mean streaks or anything like that. And scribing wasn't happening. Yeah. So it went from markers, and you always had a marker on you, and then it's... Then it's you know, uh, uh, skinny cap. Mm -hmm. The German skinny cap was dope. You mm -hmm. know, you try some shit out. And then it was fat cap tags. On the yeah. bicycle, just bomb everything, you know. Um, and uh, Was it always Chase? Uh, no. I got caught, like, a couple of times. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I think a lot of people have different names sure. than they started off with. Yeah. Uh, my first name was Doom. Uh, kind of based off the movie, okay. and also the skater, Chris Postris. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that was like, I was like 12 or some shit. And I, and I turned into like a cryptic thing. It was like more of a symbol than an actual tag. Yeah. And then uh, some of the older homies were like, look, that's cool and everything, but you got to put your style in there, you know? So then I became Dune Stir. Okay. And I liked it, even though it was a long word, that was like a quick throw-up thing to like really get out there. Uh, but then I got caught with that, and then I went uh, to news for a second, mm. which was like, yeah, news with a Z. Okay. You know, the W and then the bop, bop, the Z. Sure. And then... Uh, no, that shit's news. Yeah, it, it, this is the news. Fake you know? news. Yeah, <laughs> fake news. <laughs> and then, uh, news. for some reason, I, I didn't, you know, uh, there's a legend where I'm from. There's only a handful of uh, legends where I'm from. Uh, but Duck... It's a strange name in English, you know, but Duck uh, was this foster home kid who got emancipated and he was painting insane 3D. Mm. You can kind of, there's some YouTube shit you can find, mm -hmm. but like really like everything was candy and gummy bear textured okay. in 92, 93, while uh, Delta was doing his 3D, like, you know, mind blowing shit in, in, in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. Duck was doing the same thing, but like I'm in, his, we're in the crew together, mm -hmm. and what he was painting is like it's bananas, mm. and so he had a tag uh, that that was uh, it was Channer was his like street name because he was the only guy that was doing like legal stuff mm. every now and again, mm -hmm. and Channer I like the C H A you know that part, mm. so I'm like what what can I get with a C H A in part uh, tribute to him. Uh, for like, not mentoring us, but he was just like, if you want to paint, paint. Sure. And we're at his place, and he's like, paint right there. And we're like, at, at the master's house? You know what I mean? This guy's a fucking king. Yeah. You know? I guess he joined FX a little later after that. Yeah. Which is a big crew. Okay. And he's like, dude, go right there. And we're like, these little toy kids, you know, taggers. He's like, go, go, go. And you know, are you sure? And me and my homie are like, all right, let's do it. And so we're practicing, like, you know, like s simple double outlines and shit on his wall in his fucking apartment. That's how cool he was. Mm. And so as it gave you the keys, yeah. a little bit the keys. That like, was the passage. It's like, 
graffiti was so, especially pieces, they were so mysterious, you know. I put magical respect on it. Like, that's not for me. There's, there's no way I can ever do a double outline. And some of the homies that were already doing some walls and like, like properly finished wild styles and stuff, mm -hmm. they liked that they were the ones that got, that they got all the accolades. Sure. You know what I mean? And so Duck, however, was better and like mind blowing style. And he was like, man, you could do it too. It's yeah. not that big of a deal. You just yeah, like, back in the day, in the early days, it was like, it was real different than it is now. Yeah. You know, like the dudes that were good in our crew were like, you'll never be good enough. Exactly. You right. have to go through all of this. Yeah. yeah that's not right, yeah. even though you're burning it. And now it's just a hell of a lot different. Yeah. Now, it's, now it's more, ins there's people And we more believe that hype talent. because it's like, man, that looks, the fades and then the drop shadows and then just that style and like the background, like, man. And you're just like a tagger kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Like, good luck getting to that point. Yeah. Sure. And so when they place barricades in your mind, and so Duck was the guy that removed those barricades. Well, it's kind of like society's like that too, though. Now, now people are more open, right? Wouldn't you say, Josh? Like, yeah, and I and I think, it, but, but I think there's something too. First of all, this is part of what fascinates me about this culture is is a, such a tradition that's handed down. Person to be, right? Person yeah. to, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that was a, that's part of my question for you guys is how much of that is still happening. Ooh, now we're just like. It, it, it's kind of like Tony Hawk's pro skater, right. you know, uh, the, the, way, the way kids are skating today. It's like Tony Hawk's pro skater. When I was skating, and I, I skated for 14 years, probably six to eight hours a day, so that was pretty good. Sure. But I, I, I was nowhere near what yeah, they're what's doing going today. Yeah, what's going on now? the reference is there. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. possible. It's, just, yeah. it's right? the same in graffiti. Yeah. yeah. It's like back in the day, you know, 20 years ago, yeah. there was a few dudes that were dope and they could right. really do shit. Now I go on YouTube, all, I mean, yeah, on sure, Instagram sure, sure. all the time, and I see these fascinating yeah. pieces from all around oh, the world. Oh, it's endless. But it's they have, it's they the have same the, in music, right? If you couldn't get into that studio, it's, say, that it is, it's the same. It's across the board. But also, like, yeah. we had to make our own skinny tips. Oh, man. We had yeah. to, sure. mo we had to sure, modify sure. everything. Just to we have had, a tip. Yeah, we you had. Know, you had the, uh, we had to go steal. To clean that yeah, shit we out. would go you steal. Had a bag of tips. Is that now right? the tip is a dime a dozen. Yeah. Well, we'd you go know? steal tips. Yeah, we'd go hairspray cleaning supplies. Yeah, nowadays you go buy a box. Right, I'll take a hundred of those and throw them away. And if we threw away. A tip at, at Belmont back in the day, somebody, we'd go find tips yeah, and yeah. clean them, yeah, like you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. Wow. We'd go after Slick or whoever painted, and there'd be a few tips there. We'd go yeah. home, soak them, use them again. Because the so tip the tools was are even there. like, the, having a certain tip opened up a code. Sure. A code of painting. Like, you can get in there with this tip. Yeah, no Not doubt. with that tip. Right. That's you interesting. Know what I mean? Yeah. Crazy. That's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's code. interesting. And then I think, you know, kind of what you're saying, like, I still think it's, you know, one in a thousand or one in ten, whatever the number is, right, that's, most kids are just going to kind of copy whatever they've seen. And again, whether it's art or sport or music or right. whatever, right, most people are just getting along. They're, yeah. just, they're just taggers, right? That, uh, that, and then you I have think, the one. I think because there's so much legal now, legal sure. stuff, that, yeah, like, you really choose a side. Like right. You're either gonna get up and and fuck the legal shit, and just do that proper, mm -hmm. or you're gonna be like, you know what? I'll I'll do the legal stuff, and maybe like everyone that knows, uh, the inside will know. I'll do Ill illegal stuff too, or mm -hmm. the other faction is only legal, mm. you know, and that's it. Yeah. And if it's only legal, I think the illegal kids are like, eh, that's bullshit. Sure. I'm gonna piss on that, you know. Right. Which isn't the way it used to be back then. Because uh, back then, to cross, to, to go over someone, yeah, uh, that's, that's serious. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And depending on where the spot is, it can get more serious. Yeah, sure. no doubt. I'm yeah. going yeah. through some shit right now with yeah. that. But I think to your point, Josh, about, you know, it's easier to pick it up now than it used to be. You have more examples. You can go watch YouTube videos. You have more tools. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think the barrier to entry for the game is a lot easier than it used to be. You know, right. it is, but I guess what I'm saying is like, there's only so many kids that are gonna push themselves to be better than everybody else. Does right? better matter anymore? Mm -hmm. And the answer is no, because okay. the audience is broader. Okay. When we were the, your peers yeah. and we were judging you, meaning we being a small handful or a very small mm -hmm. subculture of people yeah, that you, understood you it and were a part of it and verified it, it was a lot harder. 
So you tried harder. Now, now everybody can buy a blue check. Now for $8. James can go over here and ask this dude at the at the gas station, can he paint? Yeah. Not need that. He'll say sure, and then people, somebody will like it mm -hmm. because yeah. now it's it's more accepted and it's a broader audience. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, a ton yeah, of yeah. artists out yeah. there, and I'm not saying any names. There are a ton of artists out there that I'm friendly with or that I work with. That's that the editing got today. The that I do name, not like. Name. No, listen, I do not like their art. But yeah. they go hard all the time, and they're constantly yeah. doing it, and have more followers yeah. than I do. And it's sure. they're like it's the greatest thing going. And if you really break it down and look at it, as you're saying, and go, is it good? Are they pressing limits? The answer is no, no, no. Yeah. But how much space? How how many locations can you get? Yeah. How many people are going to sh sure. show approval? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, Games yeah. change. See, that's also the difference now. Like back then. Uh, you paint it for the approval of your peers, right. you know, that small group. Right. Yeah. And it's flicks, flicks get, get exchanged, mailed, stuff like that. Sure. And if someone's like, man, that's fresh, I was like, man, he thought that was fresh. Yes. You know? Like, yeah. what does a battle look like in current times, Chase? Well, like, imagine if Oof. you battled someone, who's yeah. the judge? Your Instagram followers yeah. or are there peers? Are there Most battles? Are, are you seeing battles? You know what I mean? Say it again. Are you seeing battles? No. no. I mean, there was Baba battled anger on Melrose not too long ago, but it was a friendly anger? battle. Yeah. yeah, anger was painting. Yeah, nice. Well, probably a year and a half ago, two years. Sick, man. But it's like it just you know back in the day, like you battle, and you're they're judging different elements of the piece yeah. and sure. colors and fill and outlines yeah. and three Ds and yeah. there's like a there's a science to it. Now mm -hmm. it's I wouldn't even know what a battle looked like because I'd love to see some people battle. Yeah, I think now it's like you battle you with with, with yeah. your repertoire, okay. you know, which uh, depends on what plane you're battling. Now we're battling for bread. That and and yeah. and, but we all have our favorites. You know what I mean. And who is your favorite? Oof, man! Don't be shy. Like uh, I mean, I know you have like multiple, I, I but love. I was your just knee jerk. I Oof. was just hanging out with him in Amsterdam. Uh, man, I really, really love Flying Fortress. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Hamburg, uh, we'll Germany. Just pff, and guess what? I have no idea style. who it is. Yes, yeah, you, you don't know Flying Fortress? No. I'll have to send them to you. Yeah. I'm, I'm old. No, I'm old. Yeah, I mean, look, I, he's I, been I, around for a long time. I believe yeah. that. All in, you know, can do it all. Flavorful, just line quality, um, letters, like lots of illegal stuff, you know, just like all in kind of guy. So let's go back to you for a minute. So, so you, you kind of talked about the name. You know, now, uh, you know, I started seeing you around Venice and I, I assume, you know, I, I didn't know until I dug in further that you painted all around the world and I thought you, you know, I thought you're a Venice guy. Yeah, everyone, um, everyone does. Yeah. 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 Um, so how, how has your style evolved? I know the, the eye is a big part of, of your thing. It, it's Although interesting. I know you yeah. have others. So tell me about how that's evolved and is it, um, how much is conscious versus it just sort of happens? Uh, yeah. So it started with now being here, you know, uh, finished high school here, went to uni then fell in love with this girl, then I'm here, then student visa runs out, mm. money runs out. Yeah. Ooh, I like the palm trees, I like <laughs> my baby, you know, what am I gonna do? Yeah. So I did what I did, and then, uh, you know, which put me in, a, in an awkward position as a human being, which is, uh-huh, you're here, but you're not really here. Mm. Oh, so you're ghost. Hmm, what do you like to do? What would you like to do? And this is what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so, fortunate enough for me, L.A., uh, especially back then, everything is unpainted, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. It's still kind of unpainted, sure. but now it's, like, populated with art more than ever. But back then, let's say 96, 97, I mean, no one's painting anything, I feel. Yeah, like, Belmont, the, the yards, yeah. motor, like, you know, under, you right. know, the sure. heavens, like, Here all due respect, like, those heavens are crazy downtown. Yeah. But, like... Europe was already like getting into th thematic murals. Mm -hmm. You know, guys like Lumit and, 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 and Dame. It was already like beyond the wild style character, wild style character vibe. And so... I mean, I couldn't believe we, we were in Paris through, right before the pandemic. Right. There's fucking art everywhere. Street art. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. But Paris also has no walls. Sure. Zero walls. But it's sticker, you know, sticker tiles tags and with, bombs. Yeah. Uh, anarchy and invader yeah, yeah. and that, like yeah, they that's just get everywhere. Creative, right? But the no walls. Everywhere. You can't. I had a wall in Paris for seven years on a Centre uh, 
uh, Pompidou, by okay. the Pompidou Museum. Mm -hmm. I used to, I had it for seven years. I went back five times to repaint that wall. Oh, wow. I dip in, go out at night, social club, say what's up to the homies, and then I dip out, you know, because that was the only, like, mm. one of the only spots in Paris. That would I run. It, and it would run. Yeah. And so it, it may be towards the end of that year, it would catch a tag or something. Sure, sure. But guess what? I'm back in June anyway. Yeah. yeah. New flicks, bam. Fix Still got my spot. Yeah. Nice. Best spot in Paris. So I always like good spots. And the way I got there is by, um, so my best friend, uh, his name is Zenith uh, from back home. Uh, so we were, he was like my partner in crime, you know, tagging, getting up, stealing every day. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we stole so much shit. It's crazy. And so when I left, I got here. I'm now going to high school, finishing that shit. And I kept stealing a little bit, you know, allegedly. Well, that's too long ago now. But uh, Cab is on back in those days, you uh -huh. know. Uh, Tommy Hill outlets, Nautica, like that was my shit. But then the tag and stuff, it was like, man, I can't keep doing that, especially not here, because they'll block me, they'll deport my ass. Sure. You know? yeah. So finished high school, did a piece there, uh, talked to st uh, the student body into painting something there. Oh, I cool. painted High Spirit, because yeah. Beats, Rhymes, and Life just came out. Uh -huh. And I was like, yeah, let's keep them motivating, you know? Nice. And, uh, and then I lived on Federal, Federal in Santa Monica, West L.A. And then I met Steve, who had a car wash there, that okay, long yeah, alley. Yeah. I later gave it to Trickster, and nice. so they've been painting it, and they just tore, tore it down. But that was my practice spot, you know? So I took Zenith's uh, pics that he sent me, put that in a book, and he was, you know, trying, like, backgrounds, 3D, like some characters, you know? So I'm like, that's, that's my boy. I, I mean, if he can paint like this, I'm just like, I'm around the corner from being yeah, able to yeah, paint like this. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. do it too. So let mm -hmm. me just, yeah, let me just present myself. This is my work. And then I would paint in the, in the alley, try shit out, put, put more uh, flicks in the book, and uh, paint it on drywall, cheapest canvas you can get for yeah, anyone no that's li listening, on the balcony. And, uh, you know, started going around on the bus. Met a lot of people on the bus. And, uh, you know, just like be on the lookout for walls and bam, that's a wall, you know, get the transfer, boom, go talk to those people. And then um, that, that took a minute, um, but there was love in my heart, sure. just like there is today. Sure. And I knew that's such a beautiful wall. Can I just please paint it? You know, it's good for your business, sir. It really is. Mm. And he's like, well, you know, we got this logo. And I, and I said, please, sir, let's go out. And uh, I would show them, like, you know, that's when uh, everyone was still painting on the windows. Mm -hmm. You know, 50% off sale going yeah, on a business yeah. sale. Beautifully done. Yeah, you know? nice. It's a whole culture. Yeah. Sure. And I said, look, all you see is 50% off in logos. If I suggest uh, for your business that we do something entirely different that stands out. Sure. And he's like, well, what could, what could that be? And I'm like, uh-huh, I got it right here. <laughs> and he's like, get the fuck out of here, kid. Yeah, that's great. But some, that's I, cool. would, some I would get. Yeah. Some I would get, and then I'd get my little, you know, uh, 150 bucks, you know, go to ROM page, get my Krylon, <laughs> and, um, which was a whole mission on the bus, too. You know, you get 100 cans, you get, sure. you're rattling on the bus and shit, like, you know, homies are on the lookout. Yeah. Um, it was a whole adventure, man. And so step by step... You know, I feel like I did a lot of work educating businesses that this is a good thing, not yeah. only for their business, because that, that's all they really want to hear, mm -hmm. but also for the community and also for, for the art in general. And so at what point does that become a career, a business? Like, is that, is that overnight it's, that no, you, you wake up one morning and you're like, okay, I'm, not, I'm a professional artist? Uh, it it was... I would say, you know, there's little shows you do, mm -hmm. you know, blah, blah, blah. A little commission here and there. And then I think the wave started happening because you have to make a decision. You know, are you going to, because there's some kids, they don't want to, they don't want to work with any brand, any corporation. They're like, man, that shit's worse. Of course, yeah. You know, I happen to be on the side of like, man, that could be cool, especially if I could, if I could do it my way. Uh, and get a check, mm -hmm. hmm, seems like I'm getting up in that world. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I always said yes, and I, I think that little wave started happening probably 2003, four-ish. Okay. Like three, four years before the Banksy effect, which yeah. was probably 2008. 
Mm. And then when the Banksy effect hit, everyone benefited. Sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It becomes a thing. So how does that, so don't tell me the amount. What's the biggest check you've gotten? Uh, the biggest che check I got? For what? For what it? Oh, uh, copyright infringement. <laughs> okay. Those are fun checks. Yeah. Uh, those are fun checks. Uh, nice. This is good for people that are listening that may be in, this, in a similar field. Yeah, sure. Uh, whenever you paint something in a public space, uh, there's such a thing as a Visual Arts Rights Act. And you may have painted it for free, maybe even paid for it. Yeah. And I paid for a lot of them. Uh, you know, supplies, maybe the lift or whatever. Sure. Uh, if that work uh, reaches like a, a recognized stature, mm -hmm. is the legal jargon, mm -hmm. then uh, it's automatically you know, your copyright. And if someone whitewashes that shit, you got a check coming. If yeah, you talk yeah to we've, the right seen attorney. A, we've seen a few lawsuits. Yeah, exactly. Lots of precedent now, went all the way up to Supreme Court. So my uh, word to the wise, spend the $32 to register your mural with the copyright office, and then you can get damages up to $200,000 wow. plus legal expenses. That's great that's advice. A good, that's a good tip, yeah. Nice. Yeah, because if we're going to you know, do it out there anyway, Sure. Might as well know our rights, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and it's a really interesting, you know, <clears throat> you know I, I've, I've been to the city council hearings of, right. uh, uh, over graffiti and, you know, uh, what's, what's vandalism versus art and all, right. all that, which I consider a bullshit debate to begin with. But, you know, but now... That gets photographs and used in an ad campaign. Can't do it. Right. It's not yeah, not at all. It Absolutely. just happened. Who, who just got, who, somebody just posted about that. Uh, recently. Uh, Roger posted something about it. Somebody else got fucked. Oh, Guest, Guest put a Banksy piece in that's the right. store. Oh, that's right. Yep. Guest and Marciano Shinobet, he's yeah. an art collector. Of exactly. course. Yeah. But, he, you know. But that's his like, team not doing due diligence. Sure. You know, that's, that's half the time that's what it is. 100%. But it, I think it it's great that Banksy's like, go steal from them. They stole from me. Yeah. And I think a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of motherfuckers are stealing. Yeah. Right I mean, it, it, that's a, a, it revokes a situation with H&M as a prime mm -hmm. example. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, storefronts had throw-ups for days. Yeah. Totally. And I think, H and, I think that's a marker for H&M's business being pretty much non-existent. Yeah. Because when's the last time since that incident? H&M, like, I used to get some shit at H&M. I did, too, and every you know? time I go now, it's complete I mean, garbage. Can, I don't even walk into the place. Can't find anything I want. Never go into that place. Yeah. It's because you guys are too old. Um, Probably that's what it is. Not really. I mean, they had some staples. You know, <laughs> no, no. $20 shirts, you buy seven yeah. of them. You, you get You're drunk good. and leave it at the yeah, party, crisp, so what? Crisp yeah. white tees or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Now there's nothing. Yeah. Yeah, what, it doesn't um, even exist. Yeah. Let me ask you this. What... What's the craziest spot you ever hit? Like, like danger, you know, like just, you know, the most dangerous spot you ever hit. Like illegally? Illegally, illegally, oh. doesn't matter. Oh, illegally would be more dangerous. Um, it's the, what's it called? Uh, I think it's the Rowan Hotel. I forget the name. It's a hotel in uh, Washington, D.C. Oh, okay. And uh, I said yes to it. Um, it's like a four-day mission. This is legal or illegal? This is legal. Okay. Legally. Uh, four-day mission. And I, I, I painted like a... It, it turned out to be... I, I was going to like perfect the lines, but then I decided to do it with a fat cap. Sure. It's just a map of the area in which the hotel is. Hotel's located. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And it's like black on white. You know, kind of design. It's a good solution for them. So I get there, there's a tree there. I'm like, shit. I got the biggest boom lift. The yeah. biggest boom does not articulate. Yeah, not at right? all, yeah. It's about eight, eight stories. Wow. Uh, with a ladder, you can like go to the far left corner. But first, the tree's gotta get out of there. Oh, man. So please, let's put that tree back. It's a lovely tree, let's not kill a tree. So they uprooted that, you know, patched it down. Lots of plywood, like six layers of plywood. You know, even the earth. And um, so I'm like, ah, let's attack this shit. And then all of a sudden it starts raining, right? So now the, the earth was all like, what's the word? Already. Mulched or what, yeah, what do you yeah, call yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, so, so it was like extra non-condensed or yeah. dense. So now the machine starts sinking, right? And it's raining. And I'm like, fuck, I really got to keep going. So because the machine started sinking, when a big machine, like whatever tonnage that is, 
is off balance, it barely moves. Yeah, it won't work. So you're like inching. Yeah. But I got this whole fucking side of this hotel to do. Yeah. You know? Was it worth it? Uh, it was worth it once I got the night guard. <laughs> uh, I'm like, look, my man, there's, it's Washington. You're going to be fine. You know, keep an eye on the door, but I'm going to give you some cash. Bring an umbrella. And I figured out you can operate uh, the, uh, the, the, the lift from uh, the bottom. You know, the controls yeah. there override, override the, ones the on cab, top. Yeah. right? So That's then you great. can still move quickly. So I'm yeah. like, one, to the left. <laughs> no, other left. You know, it was shaking in the rain That's and great. shit, like with the fat cap. Luckily, not too many drips. And nice. uh, yeah, I was sick for like a week after yeah, that. Sure. Just drenched and like sure. cold winds and shit. Like, that was pretty crazy. So you, uh, walls are definitely your thing. Love walls, man. Yeah. Why? What, what's the, Oof, what's I, the... What's the business decision? Uh, it's not business, man. Okay. Like, nothing I do is business. Okay. It's just joy. Yeah. Like, applying color to surface. And I'm like a spray paint guy. Mm -hmm. Like, I never buff or any, any of that shit. Like, even my paintings are spray paint. Like, just, just that, you shake up that can. Maybe you got an ice cold Coca-Cola, which you never drink. You know what I mean? You got some sun, that L.A. sun. And there you go, you know, yeah. you're applying paint, good location, that's important to me, gives me a lot of uh, energy, and you're just doing your thing, out loud, like you dreamt of when you were a little kid. Mm. And just to be able to do that, like whether I offered to do it for free, or I get hired and it's a big check, I don't care. Sure. You know, equal finish, finishing, equal love, and just like blessings, you know? Nice. Yeah, for real. And so how do you bring that joy to other projects if it's canvas, if it's, I saw there's a, uh, what's the clothing brand? You have a collab? Oh, uh, Tatras. Yeah. 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 That was an interesting thing. Uh, it's like a luxury outerwear brand. Yeah. Uh, I know I was going to buy one. I'm like, fuck, this is, yeah. this is expensive. It's, yeah, of yeah. course it is. It's Chase. <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 you it's, can see Chase is bougie. Uh, I'm a little bit bougie, but I'm not that bougie, and I had to think about it, you know. Like yeah, you got that European high fashion sense. Yeah, yeah. better set. Yeah, Josh says things better than I'll mine. take what I can get. <laughs> no, but I think all that has shifted. So how do you bring how do you bring that that joy mm. to uh, projects for me, like it's, that? It's 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 the surrounding presentation. Okay, with a brand like Tatras. Uh, a lot went in uh, to their in-store stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the build-out. Sure. We were up at Isetan, which is like, you know, you're next to Chanel and shit, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that opportunity was great. And it took me a minute to, like, accept it because I come out of, like, the skate world, sure. you know, where if you wear it, then you're the shit. You right. know, that's my new friend in whatever, 89, just yeah. for wearing a Mar Gonzalez T-shirt or something. Sure. And so things getting too expensive, like... You got to get used yeah. to it, but I think it's balanced by the quality and by the addition. It's like print releases, you know. Mm -hmm. If this is a one of twenty mm -hmm. and it's hand embellished, different price than an offset. Of course. And so I think uh, even in the product uh, categories of the world, I think that's it's only right. Let me ask you this: yeah. so, you know, as a graffiti writer, when I drive, let's say I go to San Diego and I go back two years later and I see them still up, whether it's a sticker, it's stencil, or a tag, or Whatever, when you see somebody walking down the street wearing your shit, do you get that hyphy feeling? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of yeah, cool, Yeah, you want right? to meet the guy. Like, yeah. Of course. Like, yeah. Cause, yeah. So at the end of the day, it's about the fame, Yeah. right? I mean, for you or no? Uh, like, I consci consciously, like, because look, when I got here, I knew I can't be a graffiti guy anymore, you know? Uh, first guy I met was Hashim. Uh, he was in TPS here. Hashim and Germ, I was in class with. You know, they're in a crew with uh, Jojo and uh, Coffee at the time. Yeah. So I meet them. I met Jojo later. But all of a sudden, Coffee's in the mix. And it's like, yeah, I, 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 can, I can be of no help. You know, I, what, what am I going to do? Yeah. You know, we can kick it, but I can't go out there with you So it's you not about the fame. Um, it's, for me, it's about, um, like, I'm just trying to spread the best of myself. Mm. You know, so... As an immigrant, like, shit gets dark, you know? It got dark. Like, living in a one, one bedroom with five other homies, you know? And there's, I mean, there's only one bedroom. And you're sleeping on a futon mm -hmm. with some fucking smelly feet next to you, you know what I mean? 
that's early beginnings. Sure. That's the first couple of years. Yeah. Not having a car for so long is, 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 is an issue. Uh, you know, like, um, I remember the first time I had $1,500 in the bank. I was like, man, I made, yeah, I made it. Yeah. 1500 no bucks. No but doubt. that took me a minute, man. Me too. I, I went, I, I don't know if it was 15, but it was in, yeah. in that range. And yeah. I was like, I got a clean 1500. Like, what? So I had a, I had a, a shitty futon in my apartment. Yeah. Futons were the that, shit. That was like, you know, you'd sleep on and then couch yeah, or whatever. Yeah. You and roll so, it over. So I get a little money in the bank. I'm like, I'm going to go buy me a couch. Yeah. And so I go to the ATM and I take out, I think it was $1,000. Mm, that's a good couch. Over and there. I'm walking to the couch store. And between the ATM and the couch store, I was like, I'd rather have this money than the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I turned it around. Again. I turned it around. It feels good to count it, Went too. back home. And I kept that fucking knot in my pocket until I blew yeah. it on some bullshit. On some other but, shit, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I, I so, know that feeling of like having nothing to yeah. having a little something. Yeah. It's like, to, to be honest, because you asked a good question. What was it about? What is it about? And so when I got here and, and then I started to paint these walls, and Venice was always really not, uh, re receptive of me for some reason. Did a lot of, uh, at, at, at some moments, I had like 20, 30 walls up where people were complaining, like, can, can someone else paint? Yeah, can I'm like, man, yeah. it's there. Sure. I'm just, I don't blame them. Yeah. I'd be tired of looking at you, too. You know what I'm saying? And that's honest. Yeah. I've heard that too many times. Yeah. Like, this fucking fool again? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But and, that's, that's that So did work, you make a conscious ethic. ever to start painting outside of Venice? And See, I'll did, tell you what the happen. mission was, though. Like, like I'm guided by uh, Freestyle Fellowship, mm. Farside, um, Master Ace, Paris. Mm -hmm. Great albums. Mm -hmm. uh, Smith & Wesson, Dig It In The Crates, Pete Rock, and C.L. Smooth. You know, that was the wisdom that in my little brain, in my little, you know, hip-hop being, mm -hmm. it's like I take the positive from that. Mm -hmm. Gangstar, Step mm -hmm. In The Arena. Like, those lyrics, you know, and there's so many lyrics that stand out. You know, positivity is the key in the lock. Like, that stuck with me. Because I'm, I'm get goosebumps, you know? Yeah, Black These are Star. mentors. These yeah. are mentors yeah. on the straight and narrow. I know what's happening back home. I know where I came from. Sure. I'm on a different mission here. Yeah. And even here, I can't get caught up. I can be of no use, actually. I got different... I, I'm drawn by something else. So in the beginning, I put a lot of those messages into the work. Mm. And that's... Uh, it seems funny now. Uh, but they were called the awareness geezers. Okay. You know, like one eye skeptical, the other eye wide awake. Okay. And then it had messages like, remember who you are. You know, goodness is the only investment that never fails. Mm. Like, like early, now it's all cheesy. Now the LAPD has a sticker that says, be the change. <laughs> right? It's like cliche now. We're sure. 25 years later. Right. But at the time, I was like, I'm doing this for others. Yeah. You know, That's great. Like, if I'm going to be in the street, I'm going to be like Q-tip or some shit. I'm, yeah. I'm going to be a positive force. Colorful and nice to look at from a distance. For those that are curious up close, mm -hmm. I'm going to bless you with a little something that you need to hear today. Mm -hmm. And um, then I realized I'm not doing that for everybody else. I'm doing that for myself. Mm. I'm lit literally keeping these messages in front of me so I can stay on the right path. So you sure. remember. Yeah, now it's part of your DNA though, right? Uh, and now it's like I've turned all that and now it's about the feeling. Can I evoke a psychedelic feeling? Is your color is so mm. rich in energy? You know, can I can I get like pops of color, like a wave of light? If I could light this shit up, if I could paint with fluorescence, unfortunately that fades real quick yeah, in the street, so I can't. Mm -hmm. I would be Mr. Fluorescent. Mm. But short of that, I'm looking for combinations that like, woo, that's a that's a glowing good yeah, vibe. Yeah, pop you know? off the wall. So that's that I want to evoke now, uh, that kind of thing, and like give a little wink uh, to our psychedelic brothers and sisters that are going that's on cool. journeys, you know. So I saw one of your socials or something. You have a quote that says, "The more I paint, the luckier I get." That's it. Tell me about that. That's how it is, you know. Uh, I've been here a long time. I've seen Hollywood careers start off big shot no more back home with, with your ass, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I've seen... You know, I mean, we all have. We're, I'm we're taking that sure. one for about we, a week. <laughs> back home with your ass. Yeah. Back yeah. to Jacksonville or wherever the fuck you came from. And then, oh, uh, no disrespect. But um, I, I feel like it, I love L.A. so much. And, like, 
I went to elementary here. I went to high school here. I'm different than all the other visitors. You know sure. what I mean? Um, and so, but over the years, you meet so many people that, that are self-delusional. You know what I mean? And nothing beats doing it, man. Mm. It's back to basics. Mm -hmm. You can talk about it, have opinions mm. about it. Uh, man, you know, I could do, you know, just do it. Just, yeah, Nike said it best, just do it. You, you know, ever that's... find yourself kind of falling off of that and having to, to remember? Me? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, not me. Okay. Yeah, I'm solid. Yeah, okay. you know what, that's for me as a dealer slash middleman, you know, guy, business guy in this game, it's refreshing to hear that because the delusional part Oof. seems to have taken over. You know, it's, it's a every, lot. Yeah. Well, it it right. just sucks when I see people chasing the paper and not ah. the not the not, or the not fame the, or you well, know. Well, hold on, the yeah, fame sorry. part. We're gonna have a little debate. Yeah. Because a lot of people are driven by that. Right. It's it's great that you're not, but that is a a very necessary part of what we hear in Los Angeles. How that started. Right. Because we, we we weren't the the the. the the quarterback or the star basketball player, but we had our own little thing going. So the fame part I get, but it's when people get in the game thinking they're going to chase the paper and they don't right. really care about the outcome. Or and how by the way, I wasn't talking people. about graffiti culture. I was talking about people sure. that live in LA yeah, at period. all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Society. I like when people like they want to be great at their craft. Yeah. And then for all the famous friends that I have, the the, the ones that I have, like fame is like, God damn, this, I wish that wasn't there. That part is the annoying part. Yeah. But the craft and developing that and being well, the best? Our fame is different, though. We're That's not true, famous yeah. for our face or our right. voice. We're famous for the, the things that we leave behind. Right. That's true. So a lot of people don't know what you look like, but they know your work. And right. that's, mm -hmm. another, that's another sense of fame. Right. And it's a good fame because you're, you're detached from it to a for certain sure. extent. You don't have to deal right. with eating dinner and people are bothering yeah. you. Yeah. you know? yeah. but let me ask you this. I had somebody ask me the other day. It's first solo show. The guy's a great painter. Who is he, it? I, I'd rather not say his name. Oh, okay. Actually, I'll say Greg Lingle. So he asked me, he said, well, you know, can you give me some advice on pricing? How, how do you, what's your pricing game? Do you, do you have a market value that you stay at or, 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 do you, or would you rather give it, give it to somebody for what they can afford because you want to bless them? I like coffee's approach, you know, uh, very affordable so you can keep selling. Yeah. Right. Um, you know what, what, what you can get for it and you know how much it's worth, you know, um, like, you know, the ingredients to pricing, I think, is it's your story, how much you've put in, how successful you've been at that. And when you upped your prices incrementally, if at that plateau, things were still working out yeah. sales-wise. Yeah. You yeah. know, I, I think it's silly sometimes kids, like, oh, this is $18,000. I'm like, who are you again? Yeah, no doubt. You know? That's and maybe you can find a few of those customers, and there's yeah. some sales reps in the middle that can, that can parlay that for you. Yeah, but I hate it's that. But it's not honest. I hate that. You know? And then, then you're stuck up there, and then what are you going to do? Well, I, I'll sell it for two. Yeah. But then if you sell it for two, then you're slapping the people in the they face that bought it for 18. 18. Yeah. And that's yeah, not cool I think either. that's a, I mean, there's a little bit of maturity in that right. thought process, right? Like, what you know, if you... If you map out your career, what you want is for your price to go up steadily yeah, over, over time, up. right? But that, has to, that means yeah. it has to be lower today yeah. than it's going to be next year. I, I, I think it's when it starts, starts selling like hotcakes, then you can you put, put the, uh, yeah. squeeze the price a little sure. bit. Up, yeah. well, if you ask me, it's like the premium versus the generic line at the concept. Right. If I was an artist or if right. I advise artists, I'm like, you make your basic stuff. Right. You keep mm -hmm. it affordable. Right. Look at Shepard, his prime example. He releases all these prints. They're... Sixty, eighty dollars. He Great. does four hundred, but then he sell, has his sell, yeah. originals, mm -hmm. and there's layers to those originals. There's right. the wood and the metal pieces. Then there's yeah. the canvases. Right. I think that's to me the best way to go about your business because you get yeah. to grow the fame and the audience by the affordable pieces, right. but sure. then the collectors get the very special pieces that are premium. Oh. What I hate seeing is when people are selling, you know, like thank you for this gift, but they bring they they have this piece and it's sixty two hundred dollars, yeah. and it took them thirty minutes to make. Yeah. Make something special that's yeah. worth the value yeah. of what you're you're asking. Yeah. Sure, you know. And but I also Chase tell people that I work with Retina and everyone else. It's like let's say Josh really wanted a piece of yours, and in your mind or your heart or your market value perception, it's worth fifteen thousand dollars. If he really wanted it and only wanted to pay ten, let him have it because he course. really wants yeah, it. For sure. And then his enthusiasm towards you, giving him the price that he could afford, versus yeah. him bending over yeah. backwards and getting a loan to pay the price that you want. Yeah. 
I think it, it's just, it's to your point yeah. where it's spreading love. And, and that's love. a luxury, you know, um, you know, to, to really have people that really want it is sure. already a luxury. I was just hanging with uh, 123 Clan. Yeah. And you know how they do it? A lot of times I'm like, wow, that's extra luxury. They do it where if someone wants the piece, even if it's through a gallery, because galleries are very protective over their clients. Sometimes you sell a piece, you don't know who it is, mm -hmm. which sucks. Mm -hmm. It my piece is adopted. I don't know to what family. Right. Sure. So they uh, they they meet the, the the collector or the buyer, nice. and if they don't feel it, they like we're not it. selling it to you. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And I'm like, whoa. Yeah, Retina's kind of like Retina right does there. that I shit love that. too. Yeah. Like Retina will like do that. that. Like he'll sit there and interview people, and if they're not if they answer, they answer. It's like, get them out of here. <laughs> You're out. They gotta no go. No soup for you. Yeah. Why do you want my work? You know, one of the questions he asked people is, why do you want my painting? Yeah. And they're like, well, your retina. And he's like, stop. Already, yeah. Gotta go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I yeah. love that. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's a blessing because uh, when, if people want, if they feel something for the work and they want to buy it, like, that's already luxury. Like, you know, how many, are, I mean, that's why Art Basel is a difficult situation. There's like 20,000 sure. paintings. Right. It's like hookers on the corner yeah, all no begging doubt. to get bought. And I feel that every time I'm there, I'm like, I got to get out of here. Yeah, I mean, it's too desperate. You know, when we, we work with brands, right? Right. That's the message is that your, your customer needs to become an owner of the brand. They need right. to go out and advocate and tell people and share the joy right. that they have attached to your brand with their friends. And if you're not doing that, right, you're losing this huge opportunity. I think art. Art, the, art, the, the artists that get that get it better than anybody right. else. Yeah, and right? it's a lot of work. Because you yeah. are, because if you're an owner of a piece, you're also a seller at a yeah, certain point. Much. Yeah, pretty much. Right? Eventually, yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, there's diehard collectors and, you know, but yeah. But, but at some point, right, that even, even if you die owning that piece, it's going right. to get left somewhere else. Right. Yeah, I think the, the success is being able to play both sides, you know, where Absolutely. you create value for your work, but you also create value for the process of giving that work away. For sure. So it's yeah. not just yeah. like, I need to have that because it's that person right. and everyone's going to think I'm cool. But if you're like yeah. Chase, where it's like, I need to have that because I think it's cool and hopefully everybody else digs it. That's I think right. that's, that's yeah. that there's a fine line. It's a thin line. Yeah, thin line, it's a yeah. Fine and line. you want people to have it, but you also want to respect uh, the worth of of not only your life but also your effort into that painting. You know? Yeah. Do you collect? Uh, not that much, but I have a few things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's uh, uh, it's hard to collect. You know, because once you re you really open up that door, sure. like it doesn't end. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. There's sure. so much shit I would love to. Would you consider me a collector? You? Yeah. Of course. Look, look where we are. Yeah, look at the fucking museum. I mean, it's like kind of no, like no a, problem at all. There. Uh... <laughs> well, it's kind of like it's kind of like a curator. You know, yeah. when people say, "I don't curate. I just call my homies and do a show." Okay. My collection. I didn't say I really like this artist and I need to own that. Every, okay. Everything well, you, you see a, on this wall was a gift. There might be different gift. kind of collection. Man, everything I gave that, you see on this wall was a gift. Yeah. Is that collecting? Yeah, I gave that, I gave that advice it? to a couple of galleries I worked with. It's like, you say you believe in the artists that you work with, right? right. Obviously, we're doing sure. all solo shows. My advice is always like, I, I'm not trying to sell you or anything. Obviously, we're working together. Right. But you should buy at least one piece yeah, of every jump, solo show you do. That's great. And that's how you can tell a, a good gallerist. The ones that say, fuck, I I'm, never I'm, looked at it like that. Yeah, let's do that first and foremost. That's the first red dot. And obviously, they get 50% off. I met these guys that were Why like, not? I forget, you, you might know them. They're like these fine art, like art. They would build private museums for wealthy families. Uh -huh. so they're trading, you know, stupid amounts of money on art. And uh, after 9-11, the recession, they're broke. No one's buying art, whatever. They're like fuck, we need, we need money. And so they sold a bunch of their art and it was, it was like, it was like to pay off their mortgage or something. Yeah. And then they're looking at all this cash and he's like, we just went and bought more art. Yeah. He's like, we, <laughs> like, cause these guys love, that's At their rates. He's like, yeah. we're going to figure out the house, right? We'll, yeah. we'll figure it out. Right. But they just took that money and went yeah, and bought more hard, art. And they, they, they couldn't, 
It was in him. Yeah. You know Eddie, I mean? Eddie and I were just talking, like, you're getting ready to, to, to sell your vinyl, I think you said? No, I'm doing a book. Oh, yeah, or well, maybe that was someone else. Like, yeah. to let go of a, co a collection of any kind. Oh, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, no, sure. I wouldn't sell it. I have t the piece books over 25 years, and I'm right, just taking the right. you know, collaboration of all those yeah, artists. Yeah, amazing. And I'm going to make a book. But I... I I, I struggle with selling the pieces out of the book. I'm like, I got yeah. David Cho's and all these futures that I could cut and frame and put 300 pieces in a in a gallery and sell some of them for five grand and some for 500, but I'd be able to relax for a year if I mm -hmm. did that. Right. But I'm just too attached. Yeah. Way too attached. That's how you should be. Did, did, did yeah. you leave the book intact or did you have They're to still slice intact. it to, to scan no, no, it? No, I, I didn't take or anything. I'll, okay, I'll show good. you before you leave. Yeah. Tell me about the podcast. My podcast? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the podcast is like, I got into podcasts, because you just named them. Uh, David Show had a cool podcast called uh, DVD ASA, yeah, yeah. Uh, Double Vag, Double Anal Sensitive Artist. And I'm like, man, this is, like, I, I'd seen him around and stuff, and I knew, obviously, I knew about his work. Sure. But it was, like, I was, like, addicted to listening to that podcast. Who, David Joe's? Oh, yeah. Great fuck, I mean, amazing fucking podcast. What what a beautiful maniac, man. You know. Yeah, he's a special one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and sure. I think, you know, I did the first interview ever on David Show. I don't know if you Is know. That that. Real shit. Yeah. yeah. I called him. It, somebody had hipped us to him, and I called him. And at the time, it was just, it was really hardcore graffiti only. Yeah. And like, there's no other website really out there that was as active as we were on the spot. You know, sure, there was some other ar archival. Op, you know, situations in Frisco and New York, but no one was like getting submitted and then putting up train photos yeah, weekly. Yeah. And, you know, there was a debate about he wasn't a graffiti artist, and I was like, fuck that, the dude's cool, let's just do it. You know, yeah. let's branch out, mm -hmm. call it visionary, whatever you want to call it. And I, I, I interviewed him for the first interview, and when I got, I never spoke to him, and he's like, what year was the first that? Interview. That must have been like 2000 or something. No, it was earlier than that. Yeah. It was like 90, I don't know, 94, 95. Wow. Oh wow! Nice. And he's like, it's the first interview. He's like I've fresh ever, out of high school. It's the first interview I've ever done, and I was like, that's cool. And up until the Facebook deal, I was the first thing on his uh, mm. a Wikipedia. No Funny. shit. <laughs> Money comes in all of a sudden. I'm like, yeah, hey man, where, where'd I go? Yeah. But he, he's a, uh, you know, he's definitely an interesting one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that was a real inspiration, and then okay. that was probably to 2010, I think. Mm -hmm. And then I got into other podcasts, and then I was like, man. Like, there's something, like, this is special, you know? Uh, but one-on-one -on -one is an extra dimension, yeah, yeah. you know? For sure. And so when you do that, it's, it's a conversation that you don't get to have, you know? I totally uh, agree. Unless that's, if you go on a road trip with, so, with someone, you know? Yeah. And they're sitting next to you, it's similar. Sure. Yeah. And I'm like, man, th this, is, this is good. This is good. And, uh, yeah, we're at uh, episode, what is it now? Episode 38. Yeah. It's called Happy No Fear. And it's, you know, it's not serious. Sure. But it is. But it's not. Yeah. yeah. I know I, I know the feeling exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, all right, I got to do a lightning round. Okay, <laughs> lightning round. Uh, we'll see how fast it is. Oh, you man. never know with this. Um, now, James makes it fast. He just, he'll chop it up. Okay. What's your favorite city to travel to? Tokyo. Hell yeah. Favorite DJ? Woo. Wow. I have to say DJ Premier. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's the last great book you read? Last great book, uh, many, l many loves, many lives. Uh, okay. Uh, Milan Kundera. Okay. Big Rascal. Sounds deep. Rascal Energy. Yeah, very funny shit. Short stories, a bundle, but fantastic. Nice. What movie do you think you've seen the most in your life? Whew. Man, the most? Uh, bum, 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 bum. Must be... Whew, the most, God, I would say the Big Lebowski. Oh hell yeah, 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 yeah. that's a good one. <laughs> I think I decided I think it might be Trading Places for me. Trading Places is good too, yeah. Because we now it's now with my son we watch uh, that. Uh, uh, it's a good one. At, at least once a year. Um, who's somebody you haven't met that you've learned a lot from? Uh, Alan Watts. Mm. Yeah. Uh, when I was in my deep conscious zone. Uh, when I started painting all that stuff, uh, like I read Joseph Campbell, mm -hmm. and somehow Alan Watts uh, landed on my lap. Interesting. And I used to have all his uh, sessions mm -hmm. from his houseboat in Sausalito, yeah. where he would just sit down and talk, pack a pipe, 
uh, like hundreds of hours. Interesting. So if it was your birthday and, and I gave a shit about you, this is your birthday. Yeah, birthday. that's oh, what that's you got. Yeah. Still. So tell me some, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with some of his teachings on Zen. Yeah. Um, tell me something you took from, from Alan Watts. Oof. Wow. Uh, something I took from Alan Watts. It's, it's more, I mean, there's so many, so many anecdotes and so many lessons. But it was just his way of being, mm. you know. I mean, he was a, 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 a priest in the Church of England. And he was just wondering about his own system of belief. And this is like in the late 40s, early 50s. So he's like, I'm a priest, you know. I'm in control of this knowledge. Yeah. I disperse it uh, from the pulpit or whatever he did. And he's like, well, how certain can I be of my teachings if... If I, if I never triangulated it with another system that's equally a, as developed. Mm -hmm. And then he said, well, where can I go to study such a system? And that's when he went to China. I got a book for you yeah. called Let Us Make Man by Galen McCullough. Oh, yeah? And he does that same thing. He no analyzes shit. all oh, cool. these different religions and concepts and comes to a, a, new, a new way of looking at it's all dope, that man. stuff. Yeah, it's dope, man. I'm nice. into that shit because... It's great. Because, sure. of course, you got to figure it out for you, right? That's with anything. But, like, can you really look at, at it through another very well-developed system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's equal to yours? Sure. Because then in the middle, you, you, got, you got a deeper truth about all of it. Yeah. You know, and I think uh, knowing that that's how he lived and you feel that from him with playfulness uh, when he speaks and he jokes around, you know, uh, it's like, I want to be like that guy. Love it. Yeah, one day. <laughs> Last one, if I worked for you, what's something I would hear you say over and over? Uh, it's all over, it never ends. <laughs> <laughs> That's Depending great. On, the, on the time of day. Yeah. Sure. It's I all over, that. man, it's all over. And then 10 minutes later, it never ends. You know? That's great. That's a good dynamic. Yeah. I love it. Thanks for doing this, man. Man, it's thank you guys, pleasure. man. Thank my you man, guys. my yes, G. Sir. That was Chase on Rebel Radio. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Leave us a comment or uh, whatever you feel like saying on our socials, Facebook, Twitter. I don't really care. Most importantly, come back next week for more Rebel Radio. Peace.